Hey everybody, Drew here. You're in my garage with this beautiful 2015 Toyota Prius, the last year of the third generation, which goes from 2010 to 2015. And hey, let's be honest right off the bat, these have become notorious for a blown head gasket and EGR problems. You may have seen my video on how to eliminate the head gasket or help eliminate the head gasket as a problem and you know identify the EGR. If you haven't seen that video, the link's in the description, but when you start the car in the morning and it goes for like a second and then it goes away, you've got a misfire. The reason it makes that sound is because the engine is connected to the transmission, which is really a planetary gear system, two electric motors and a planetary gear out and in from the wheels. There is a plate between those that's spring-loaded to a degree to allow the engine to come on and off uh, you know, without disturbing the car too much. And what you're hearing is that plate, those springs totally maxing out as the engine misfires. It's got four cylinders. They all need to fire on time. If they don't, one or more of them, you get a misfire, which shakes and in a Prius makes the unique sound, right? So you've seen my video, hopefully, again, it's in the description on how to just slide a putty knife between this guy here right? You take out these two 10 millimeter boats, slide a putty knife in there. And if you start it that cold morning, haven't started it yet that day, and it doesn't do the death knock, it does it every morning, but it doesn't with a plate in there. Obviously, you know that it's EGR related and not the head gasket. But if you're hearing that sound and this guy's draining, it's your head gasket, okay? But there are some other reasons which are covered in my second generation Prius uh, death knock video, which will be in the description as well, that it could be things like coil packs, spark plugs, and your fuel injectors. Hey, right at the end of my driveway, right now, is yet another second generation Prius. Just like the one in the video, it was fuel injectors. It had a couple fuel injectors. I tested them with a can for all of you guys that have uh, reached out on forums and in the comments and said, no, it's this. Well, just like the other one, I verified that I had a bad injector, put in a good injector, and now the problem's gone, right? So can't argue with uh, you know proven results. But anyways, it could be your spark plugs not igniting the gas properly, your coil packs not providing enough power to the spark plug so they could do that. It could be a fuel injector, or it could actually be something you know mechanical. If the piston rings are worn enough that there's not enough compression in that cylinder until it warms up, if the valves themselves are burned in the seat or the guide is flimsy, which can happen in these 1.8s, all those things can cause it. But I'm here to tell you how I would handle it if this was my car. If this was my car, I love it. I've taken care of it. I've always done oil changes. I've rotated the tires. I've you know kept the salt off of it. Now I have that problem. How would I handle it myself? First thing I would do is obviously test to make sure that it's not the EGR system. If it is, I'd clean and replace. If it's drinking coolant, I know it's the head gasket. Personally, I would stop right there. I'd pull the head, send the head out to be checked for levelness. I'd level the block myself or check it for levelness. And I would do a new water pump right down in there. I would do a new head gasket, all the proper uh, O-rings on the, time, or on the uh, timing cover and all that, and I'd call it good. If it's not the head gasket, or not obviously the head gasket, and it's not the EGR, I would go ahead and I would buy brand new Denzel coil, uh, Denzel coil packs. Denzel's the one who made them for Toyota. Don't go to Toyota because the ones in the Denzel box from a reliable source like Rock Auto or AutoZone or O'Reilly's or whatever. Not eBay, not Amazon because there's counterfeits. Denzel coil packs, uh, NGK original equipment spark plugs. They made them for Toyota. I'm 99% certain on that. I would, of course, look it up before I did it. And I would get either rebuilt original fuel injectors or pay the money to get the original equipment fuel injectors. And I would do that, okay? If that didn't solve my problem, I would look on. But say, for example, it is the head gasket and I invested that money. Or it is the actual head itself, which can be taken off and brought to a machine shop in just about any area in the United States and machine. Or say it's the lower end, you know, it, it needs piston rings. Those parts, even if this engine is junk and you buy another engine and put it in, those are good tune-up parts. That money didn't go out the window. If you buy a replacement engine for this car, when you put it together, put on the brand new water pump, the brand new, not that the water pump is part of you know eliminating this issue, but if you throw you know, three, $400 at fuel injectors, coil packs, and spark plugs, and that ends up not being your problem, and you get the devastating news that your motor can't survive and you put a new one in it, put those parts on your new motor. You can't go wrong. So to recap, would I buy a third generation Prius? Absolutely. I have four small kids, so it's not a practical car for me. Shame we didn't get the Prius V with the third row here in the United States. Hey, you in Australia, uh, Europe, Japan that have that, it's awesome, love it. Um, you know, so I would buy a Sienna hybrid. We plan to when our Odyssey dies, most likely, but it's only got 200,000 on it. Anyway, 
what would I do if this is my car? Yes, first I would absolutely buy it. Second, I would follow my own advice in that video and eliminate the head gasket on the EGR. If it is the head gasket, I'd replace it. If it's neither, I would do all those things and I would not regret making that investment. These are absolutely fantastic cars. Now, for those of you that deny that, you know, the head gasket issue, just throwing it out there, I read at least 3,000 condition reports per year on these cars. I bid on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them and I buy at least 55, 60 of them per year. When I'm looking at second gens with 250,000 miles, I'm not seeing many problems. We've even started bringing them in for people on a budget that have 220, 230. That one's got 227. I've got a couple more right now that have that mileage. They show up off the truck from the auction and they drive great most of the time. Most of the condition reports I'm looking at for generation three, a little bit of you know inside information for you from a dealer that does this every day. At the auction, there's what's called green light and red. Green light means I could bring the car back if the engine or transmission have a problem. Red light means I'm stuck with it. Then there's a yellow light. That's the auction saying, hey, there is this issue. You need to know it. It could be hail damage. It could be an engine problem, a transmission problem, a frame problem, right? And then there's blue light, which just means the title has up to 30 days to arrive or two weeks to arrive. Anyways, I see so many of these at 220, 230, 240, even in the high hundreds that have a yellow light for misfire codes. And you look at the pictures and this guy's half empty. It is definitely an issue, folks, but this is still one of the best cars ever made. I would still buy one for my own family if we fit in it, and this is how I would handle it if I got the morning death knock in my own car. So, hey, I hope this video is helpful for you guys. Obviously, you can tell there's a lot of enthusiasm on this channel about all Priuses. We love them all. The first gen, sweetheart, never had one, love them, would love to have one. Considered importing one from Japan because they came out in 1997 there. And that is a 1997 Toyota Crown Majesta. Never, uh, never was available in the United States, just like the Prius wasn't in 1997 either. Love the first gen. The second gen's definitely my favorite. I think the third gen is the most comfortable out of all of them. The fourth gen is sick with its tech. And the fifth gen that just came out is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Even Haggerty Magazine labeled it as a possible future collector car because it's so well executed, right? Or maybe they were paid to do that by Toyota. Anyways, there's a lot of enthusiasm on this channel about Prius. We love them. We hope that if you like this video, you'll smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, share this with people. Maybe you're going through this. Hey, reach out in the comments. I try to answer as often as I can hundreds of these cars have passed through my hands and my goal on this on this channel is to show you guys everything I know and help you as much as I can. So again, if you like this, please give it a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to the channel. There'll be good content on here for you, okay? Thanks, enjoy your time and God bless you.